please remember the track record of the U.S. So despite uh, this extremely harsh rhetoric, we can see that on a personal level, uh, they had th their relationship with very respectful and uh, yes, uh, yeah, I guess everyone in the UN is mourning uh, that loss right of now. Of course, because at a, at, a, at a tragic time like this, despite all the barbs and the, and the witticisms that they throw each other when they're represent, they're all in the same boat, aren't they? They're all trying to fight the corner for their own countries. So therefore, no matter what they say to each other in terms of arguing each other's country's policies, at the end of it all, there's mutual respect all round for everyone who has to put, put up with that job, especially in a chamber like the UN Security Council. And, and for uh, Vitaly Cherkin, it's been 10 incredibly full years, some pretty difficult waters to navigate. That is true, but uh, we're not only talking about the UN here. As I was saying, uh, his career lasted for more than 40 years. And uh, if we look at the experience behind his shoulder, that is serving as Russia's ambassador uh, to Belgium in the 90s and uh, that means that he was uh, uh, working in Brussels uh, where he had to deal with the issues that had to do with the EU but also more importantly NATO and this was the era uh, when uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union uh, a new relationship between uh, Moscow and uh, Brussels and when I say Brussels here I mean uh, NATO as an alliance it was really uh, shaping out and uh, many are saying uh, that uh, how the relationships between uh, NATO and Russia shaped out eventually uh, when Russia again gained a strong voice uh, uh, when uh, they were able to resist some of the things that the Russian government did like about NATO's actions. Uh, that was something that specifically Vitaly Turkin was able to achieve. He uh, later served as uh, the ambassador to Canada. Uh, but if we look at the highlights of his career, uh, during uh, the last 10 years uh, when he was Russia's envoy to the UN, his first serious international conflict test, I guess I should say, uh, was uh, the Georgian South Ossetian War in August 2008. And uh, that was really a very, very tough encounter uh, showdown at the UN Security Council. I remember, I remember watching it on TV in my home, and uh, I just want to tell you that uh, this heated debate in 2008 was really something that uh, pushed me towards starting a career in journalism. Uh, when I watched report about, uh, the reports about this, when I watched the live discussion, this was really something fascinating. Uh, a real diplomatic battle on the grounds of the UN. But then again, uh, if we go forward, I guess uh, in terms of international relations, things have only gotten less smooth. Uh, we remember that there was uh, the conflict in Ukraine, the Syrian civil war, and uh, many, many times that led to urgent UN Security Council meetings where uh, there was face-offs between him and uh, uh, mostly three or two other uh, members of uh, uh, permanent members of the UN Security Council. Yeah. And, and often in the face of uh, those, the Western nations on the UN Security Council ganging up and trying to fight Russia's corner has never been an easy task to have at the United Nations, but then look where we are now with uh, Syria at its closest chance for peace in many a year, an Iran nuclear deal signed, and progress in other uh, areas where Russia had been criticized for its move, but positive outcomes have occurred, and at the United Nations you, you sort of get the impression that lesser men would have buckled under that pressure. Well, so many times, uh, if you look at the debates, if you watch them on TV, the debates in the UN Security Council, it was an impression that it was him, Mr. Vitaly Churkin, against uh, the entire room. And uh, we understand that some view China as an ally of uh, Russia uh, among the UN Security Council members, but they were never as outspoken as Vitaly Churkin. Uh, so we really uh, felt that way. And you mentioned the Iran uh, nuclear deal as uh, uh, one of the diplomats that knew Vitaly Turkin was telling us. It's not only an issue of defending your country's position uh, when uh, there are things uh, where uh, really uh, the members of the UN Security Council are direct opponents. Uh, it is also about being able to achieve progress on the things uh, that uh, the states can work together on and uh, the example that you mentioned with the Iran nuclear deal is perhaps the most vivid one and Vitaly's Chur Vitaly Churkin's role in this cannot be underestimated. And certainly can't, Ilya, for now. Thank you very much for that.
You're watching RT International. It's just coming up to four minutes past nine, Monday evening. My name's Colin Bray. We're bringing you continuing coverage and full hours of news after we've learned that Vitaly Cherkin, Russia's ambassador to the UN, a sad news and something of a shock too, uh, that he has passed away the day before his 65th birthday. Uh, plenty of tributes have been coming in from diplomatic circles. Uh, we heard earlier a statement from the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who passed on his condolences to Ambassador Cherkin's family. Now, Vitaly Cherkin was well known for his expert way with words. We've certainly heard tributes to that from other diplomats. Fiercely defending the Russian view on major international issues. Take a listen. We categorically do not accept any insulting statements about our country. Concerning the stance of the United Kingdom representative, I would like to give some advice. Give back the Falkland Islands, Gibraltar, give back the part of Cyprus. Right, let's talk now to RT's Alexei Yaroshevsky, who's in Washington. I think we can talk to him now. He should be waiting to talk to us. He was one of the last journalists to be able to speak to Vitaly Cherk, and it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, Alexei, uh, you and I have been in this job a long time, and you and I both well know when you talk to politicians and diplomats, their answers are more about deflection rather than answering. But you always got the impression with Vitaly Cherk in that, no, you could throw him anything. He wanted to answer it. Absolutely, and this is how um, this interview you mentioned uh, two, just two weeks ago uh, was conducted. Uh, we had five or six questions lined up prior to that interview, and uh, I think it ended up me asking him about 20 questions. And basically, I could ask him anything, and he would always have a direct answer without any deflection. Uh, but um, in one part of the interview, um, I actually asked him, I asked Ambassador Churkin what it was like to live in the age when diplomacy has changed so much with so much going on, how stressful it is it was to work as a diplomat. And here's what he replied. <clears throat> I'm afraid we don't have that clip uh, at the moment, Alexei. I mean, what the, the, the range oh. of things that you spoke to him about? We covered uh, every major issue in foreign policy. We were supposed to talk about only three or four, but we covered everything uh, from uh, Ukraine to, uh, you know, relations with Iran to Trump administration, um, Syria, Yemen, and uh, he spoke in length about what he saw as one of the major challenges uh, of the foreign policy these days is uh, re trying to reconcile uh, the Shia and Sunni Muslims in the Middle, in the middle East. Um, our viewers can go to RT.com or to our YouTube website and find that interview in full. It's uh, about 30 minutes long, which was, again, maybe twice more than when we, uh, what we originally planned to, to do. Uh, and to tell you that I'm shocked uh, about the news this morning is basically to say nothing at all, because two weeks ago when I spoke with Ambassador and he was he looked absolutely in good health he looked very animated and again um, as it's usually the case with him whether it's the rostrum of the UN Security Council or just a one-on-one -on -one conversation he always uh, had a, a direct and straight-up answer to every question that I that I gave him and he didn't even take a second to think about all my questions some of those questions were were indeed tough uh, for you know a, a diplomat or a foreign policy expert but Vitaly Churkin never had a problem with that he smiled a lot during that interview, especially when we covered the more light-hearted aspects of uh, his work, his life. Uh, for instance, there's something that not all of our viewers know, that Vitaly Churkin used to be an actor in his young days. He starred in several Soviet comedy movies, uh, but then decided to take the path of a diplomat. And I actually asked him whether he had any regrets at all, considering how stressful the environment of a diplomatic worker is these days. He said he had no regrets at all, and he would rather be a good diplomat than a bad actor. Uh, it was his joking way to respond to this question, but it could tell you how uh, he always had a, a, an answer to every question. And I, I've mentioned this earlier, maybe Vitaly Churkin within the UN Security Council, and we all remember his feisty exchanges with Samantha Power, with Susan Rice, with his colleagues from, from the Western world. Uh, and Vitaly Churkin off the UN Security Council work uh, in one-on-one -on -one chats or on and off camera. Um, he always been different, but the one constant thing was his, his 
uh, ability to provide an answer to every question. And speaking of Samantha Rice, I just saw a tweet by Samantha Rice, uh, Samantha Power, sorry, I saw a tweet by her just now that she was devastated by passing of Russian UN Ambassador Vitaly Churkin, diplomatic maestro and deeply caring man, what he did all he could to bridge the US-Russia differences. And this is coming from the woman uh, that's had who had, you know, tremendous feisty exchanges with him, which again speaks volumes about how respected Vitaly Churkin was within the UN Security Council circles, uh, within the diplomatic circles at the UN, uh, even despite, uh, you know, some harsh rhetoric coming both ways with his counterparts from the Western world. Um, in fact, let's, let's try and remind ourselves now of that interview that you conducted a couple of weeks ago. I do not regret that I chose a career in diplomacy. It would be a lie to say that it is an easy one. Indeed, there are some hard moments in the life of a diplomat of a country. We are in one of those moments right now. I would prefer that things had turned out differently and we didn't have to experience some of the events which took place in recent years. However, we are where we are and we need to react accordingly and continue to live. Vitaly Cherkin speaking in the past couple of weeks, one of his final interviews that he ever gave, which was uh, to you. Alexei Arashevsky, uh, we'll let you get on because I'm sure there's bound to be a uh, reaction coming in from where you are. Thanks very much for now, though. Just to remind you, uh, Russia's envoy to the United Nations, Vitaly Cherkin, has died suddenly. A, uh, statement from the Russian Foreign Ministry it said he's uh, died one day before his 65th birthday. Rather tragically, um, a UN spokesman has said we mourn Ambassador Cherkin. He's been such a regular presence here that I'm actually quite stunned. A spokesman from the UN's press office there. Let's talk now to Jonathan Steele, international affairs commentator and author of books on Russian foreign policy. Uh, Jonathan, good to see you. Sorry it's in such circumstances. What impact do you think the loss of Vitaly Cherkin will have on Russian diplomacy? Well, there are some very good people there who will certainly replace him, but he, it will be a tragic thing that he goes at such a relatively young age. He was the linchpin of Russian foreign policy in its public uh, face, apart obviously from Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister. He was uh, somebody who really knew diplomacy, he knew all the main dossiers of the different international problems, and he could express himself clearly and forcefully and persuasively. I, I mean, I, I first met him when I was based in Moscow as the Guardian correspondent, and he was the director of the information department of the foreign ministry from 1990 to 1992, and he was, it was clear that he was a head and shoulders above most other diplomats and, uh, from his own country as well as from other countries. And uh, one sign of that is the fact that, uh, like everybody else, I think, in the upper reaches of the Soviet foreign ministry, he was shocked at the collapse of the Soviet Union, but he actually carried on working for the Yeltsin administration. He was able to shift gear and uh, move into the Russian Federation foreign ministry uh, without a pause, and uh, it showed that uh, he, he knew, you know, how things were faring and how he had to adjust to the new reality. I just want to mention that uh, we've heard from the Kremlin, President Putin has expressed his condolences over the death of Vitaly Cherkin and offers his condolences to Vitaly Cherkin's family and to his uh, fellow diplomats. That's a statement from the Kremlin in the past few minutes or so. Uh, Jonathan, in terms of the skills needed for the role of being an envoy at the United Nations, especially when you're representing a pivotal country in the United Nations Security Council, what kind of skills are needed for that kind of role and being able to hold down that role for more than a decade? Well, you obviously need fantastic determination, but you have com must have com total commitment to your own country's foreign policy. And of course, he had that, and he, he hated being lectured by Western government uh, diplomats, particularly by Samantha Power, as you've mentioned, and Susan Rice. Uh, he hated the sort of American moralizing at one point. Quite recently, he called Samantha Power. He said, you think you're Mother Teresa. Uh, you know, who was obviously uh, the, the great sort of saint uh, of the uh, uh, in India and uh, coming from Albania, but uh, he 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 could give as good as he got, and it wasn't just the Western governments that he was able to 
criticize and uh, and uh, counter uh, and confront. Uh, there was recently, I remember a few about a year ago, there was an interview that President Assad of Syria, one of Russia's allies, of gave, saying that uh, Syria was going to take back every inch of Syrian territory from the opposition. And Turkin said words to the effect in a very dry way in an interview, uh, everybody knows there's no military solution. Uh, so he, he was not afraid to, to uh, even criticize in an oblique, very diplomatic way uh, presidents of foreign countries with whom uh, his, his own country was alive. As you mentioned, there are two things there. There's the squaring up to other world powers in order to get the job of global diplomacy done. It's quite another to share those experiences with your fellow diplomats. And yes, there's a sparring with people like Samantha Power of the United States, but she's also said that uh, Cherkin was the only one who could bridge the differences between the United States and Russia. Um, and even though we've got a new team in the White House in Washington, there are still those bridges to build, aren't they? So is that something that someone else can pick up now that we've lost somebody with such a legacy of experience? Well, as I said at the beginning, there is, of course, the Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. He is on the same. He's capable of continuity in Russian foreign policy, so he's there. So that when the I believe meeting between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin, there'll be people like Sergei Lavrov who will have a great input into the detailed discussions of the various conflict areas. And Vitaly Chukin certainly will be will be missed in that public role at the UN where you have to debate in quite a feisty way with your colleagues. Something that the uh, foreign uh, ministry Jonathan, I'm, I'm sorry to have to interrupt you there, but I think we're having a little bit of problem with the line there. We, we can't quite make out some of the words you're saying. It's a bit of a, oh, a dodgy connection for now. Hopefully we'll, we'll be able to come back to you a little bit later um, and talk to you a bit more because I know you've got uh, lots to share with us. Jonathan Steele, International Affairs Commentator. Thanks for now. Well, here's reaction from the Director General of the Russian Institute of Foreign Policy Studies and Initiatives. The passing of Vitaly Chorkin is an enormous loss for Russian diplomacy. In UN headquarters in New York, he was a leading figure on the information and political front. Over the last three years, with the situation in Ukraine and Syria, in a strained international environment, Vitaly Ivanovich gave everything to his work. His death, while still in his post, once again showed us how hard and meaningful his work and our diplomats' work is for defending the interests of our country. I knew him personally. He was a great person and brilliant professional. It's a huge loss for all of us. You're watching RT International from Moscow. We're continuing to cover the breaking news story, the sudden death of Russia's ambassador to the United Nations, Vitaly Cherkin. Right, let's now bring in uh, Sasha Ilorenti, who's the Bolivian envoy to the United Nations. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme. Um, no doubt you'll have had dealings, conversations with Vitaly Cherkin, one of Russia's top diplomats of many a year. Do you think his passing will have a strong effect on Russia's diplomacy? Oh, well, yes. Uh, allow me please to say that uh, uh, I'm very shocked and sad, very, very sad for, for this uh, uh, development. Uh, I had the honor to meet uh, Ambassador Cherkin in several occasions during the past uh, four years. And recently, because Bolivia is part of the Security Council, I, I had to see firsthand how uh, brilliant diplomat he, he was. He was not just uh, a friend and a colleague, but uh, of course he will be missed uh, uh, not just at, uh, at the UN, but I think the whole uh, system and, uh, and everyone will feel his uh, uh, absence. Uh, as I said, uh, I had uh, the, the privilege to see him uh, working and uh, uh, his uh, legacy will be one of uh, uh, his uh, willing to strengthen multilateralism and to work and to build bridges among uh, countries uh, here at the UN. You mentioned that you'd had uh, personal dealings with him. What are your personal memories of Vitaly Cherkin? Well, he had, a, uh, as I said, he was a brilliant diplomat. He had the right phrase, the right words at the right time. 
he was able to uh, remember uh, uh, specific uh, uh, issues dealing with uh, specific uh, situations. Uh, everyone was uh, was quiet when she took the floor because uh, we knew that he was uh, going to say something um, important and, and, and he did every time he delivered. And I remember last uh, December 31st, uh, uh, he uh, submitted a, a, a proposal for a, a draft uh, resolution regarding uh, the ceasefire in Syria. And uh, even though many of the member states didn't want that to pass, he managed to do it. Uh, he was uh, very, very, uh, he was smart and uh, also committed to, to a cause uh, which uh, uh, was uh, multilateralism. In terms of um, the global diplomacy, it's not just a case, as you know, of course, of you fighting your country's corner on the global stage. Um, different countries have influence and also try to help in other countries' uh, various disputes and bridging them. Is there anything that Vitaly Cherkin did in terms of Bolivia? Well, in terms of my country, uh, well, uh, we share many common uh, goals. Not that, no, not in the uh, in the works uh, specifically of the General Assembly or that had to do specifically to my country. But uh, I think we shared the common goals, uh, common principles, common values. Uh, he was uh, uh, a defender of sovereignty, uh, and uh, he. Uh, many times fought against neo-colonialism uh, and we share those uh, values and those uh, battles. I think that uh, uh, Bolivia will uh, remember Vitaly Cherkin because, uh, as I said, he was a brilliant diplomat and he uh, stood firmly uh, uh, defending not just his country but also, as I said, multilateralism. He defended the principles of the UN Charter. He was uh, he understood the value of the United Nations, and uh, at this time, with so so much uncertainty, I think that he will be missed the most. Samantha Power, the U.S. Uh, UN envoy, and uh, one of Vitaly Cherkin's main sparring partners over the year, but now, of course, at this uh, sad time, has said that Cherkin was the only one who could bridge the differences between the U.S. and Russia. As someone who's also had to have dealings with the United States on the U.N.'s stage, how do you see it? Do you, do you think he was the only person to be able to bridge that divide? What has to happen now? Well, I mean, uh, as I said, he will be missed, uh, really, uh, because uh, he had the, the experience, the talent, and uh, the wisdom to deal with the specific uh, problems in different situations. Uh, uh, he, right now, we have many, many challenges at the United Nations. One of them is, of course, the conflict in Syria. He uh, submitted many proposals in terms of uh, trying to solve that issue politically. And uh, uh, even though we believe that uh, the Russian Federation will continue with this policy, uh, he has he had uh, specific qualities that uh, will be really hard to, to find in, uh, find uh, in someone else. So we, um, I yeah. I was going to say, we've spoken to a couple of other ambassadors who've said that, of course, no one is irreplaceable. Diplomats come and go over the years. But in terms of the dynamic of the United Nations now, Russia has lost somebody with decades of experience and who's steered Russia's position on the UN stage through a pretty difficult 10 years. Various events spring to mind. Do you expect any change in the dynamic in places like the Security Council now? Well... I don't. I don't. I don't expect uh, many changes, uh, really. But uh, in terms of policies, but uh, he's uh, he will be missed because uh, he knew how the Security Council works. He knew what uh, the not just the interests of, of every stakeholder, but also their background, uh, what they did in the past, and what uh, uh, there is a double standard sometimes uh, at the United Nations. So uh, his experience, uh, he was uh, like the institutional memory of the United Nations. Many, many times he remembered everyone uh, what uh, they've done in the past. 
and uh, I think that was very, very important. I don't. I, I think, of course, that uh, uh, the Russian Federation will continue with uh, with its policies that are very much aligned with ours, uh, but uh, not just in a personal level, but in a professional one. Uh, Vitaly Cherkin uh, will be missed. No doubt about it. Of course. Um, I really appreciate you sharing your memories with us, um, Sasha Laurenti, the Bolivian envoy to the United Nations. Thank you very much for joining us on RT at this sad time. You're watching RT International. It's now 23 minutes past nine, uh, Monday evening, and we're bringing you continuing coverage of the news that the United Nations envoy for Russia, Vitaly Cherkin, has passed away suddenly. Um, <laughs> This is RT International with Colin Bray and also Nadira Tudor joining me in the studio here in Moscow. Correspondent Ilya Petrenko is still with us. Um, if there's one thing that's uh, a common thread through all the guests we've spoken to, we've had a number of diplomats, current and former, on the programme. Uh, two different things. Vitaly Cherkin, the hard man of diplomacy, and Vitaly Cherkin, the good friend. Well, uh, yes, it is a tremendously big loss uh, for the United Nations, for the United Nations headquarters in New York. Work at uh, the organization today began with a minute of silence, and uh, we do realize that this is not a formality. Uh, this was a man uh, who was a diplomatic enemy for uh, many of these people working there, but at the same time, a true friend. And uh, perhaps we can say that he was one of the most uh, bright figures at uh, the United Nations in the 21st century. And this is a man with more than four decades of experience of serving for his country, uh, serving Russia. Uh, one of our guests were saying that he both had a strategic sense and a sense of humor. So really uh, a man of uh, so many things can be said about him. And he was the man who was saying a lot of things there in the Security Council, which didn't sound uh, nice to many people. But uh, you can love or hate that. Uh, he has uh, gained a reputation uh, of a man uh, who was doing most for his country. And at the same time, he gained so much respect while serving in his position. In fact, he took the position in the year 2006. But even before that, uh, he was already known as a tough speaker who uh, really never shied away from uh, pronouncing the position of his country uh, in uh, the most frank way, uh, the position of the Russian government. When he was asked questions, uh, we heard Alexei Yeroshevsky telling us, confirming that, because uh, he interviewed him just a short while ago, uh, when he was asked questions at the UN Security Council, and when he was asked questions by journalists, he uh, seemed to have never ducked away and always tried to respond with solid arguments, and this is how gain all that respect that I've been talking you, uh, yeah, telling you about. And, and as we now know, um, that interview with RT's Alexei Yaroshevsky was the, the final interview that Vitaly Cherkin had uh, given to the media, which was supposed to have been five or six questions, turned into 20, not one of them ducked. Well, uh, also, uh, if we look at the heat of exchanges at uh, the UN Security Council, there were uh, so many issues at stake. And uh, uh, this is the UN, so uh, this is... Uh, the core of international politics, the core of international relations. A, an enormously wide range of issues, and uh, he was representing uh, the country that is a permanent member of uh, the UN Security Council, that is Russia. And let's just listen to some bits of the debates that Vitaly Cherkin has gained a reputation for. We categorically do not accept any insulting statements about our country. Concerning the stance of the United Kingdom representative, I would like to give some advice. Give back the Falkland Islands, Gibraltar, give back the part of Cyprus annexed by you. Only then will your conscience be clean enough to talk about other topics. The speech by the U.S. representative was particularly strange to me. She delivered her speech as if she was Mother Teresa herself. Please remember which country you represent. Please remember the track record of your country. I don't mind who likes me and who doesn't. I'm just doing my job. Yeah, I think what's interesting about that, you can see uh, what a large character that Vitaly Cherkin was and anyone following the difficulties over, over the last 12 months on Syria 
would be privy to those very uh, uh, those discussions that were there between the different members. And what I find interesting, actually, you know, have, having just walked in tonight to, to uh, uh, help Colin out, is that uh, Samantha Power in particular, I remember distinctively seeing a war of words uh, at one of those meetings. And what she has said is really quite something, isn't it, about uh, Vitaly Cherokin. Interesting that she's come up with such positive comments. Well, she said that she is devastated by the death of Vitaly Cherkin, uh, saying that he was a great man and that he did all he could to bridge the divide between Russia and the U.S. But uh, again, something that he was respected for was really not mincing his words uh, when it comes to those exchanges with Samantha Power included. And uh, here's a quote by what he said once how he responded to uh, her speech. He said, uh, the speech by the U.S. representative is particularly strange to me. She gave her speech as if she was Mother Teresa herself. Please remember which country you present. Please remember the track record of the U.S. And then we're hearing uh, that she's devastated and uh, we come um, to this concept of uh, friends and enemies and diplomacy. As Colin was saying, you can really be uh, an adversary in that UN Security Council room, but uh, when it comes to their exchanges, they do understand that uh, all this is happening is because they're trying to do uh, their best for their countries, for the countries that they represent. And, and that's important, isn't it, Ilya, that, that, that in, at a time like this, the, the public will be watching those exchanges at those meetings, which are obviously very important, and each country has their own perspective. But at a time like this, to come out and say, actually, this man was a great man, and he was, you know, really doing a lot of good for his country, particularly with someone like Samantha, is so important, isn't it? It is important, but uh, also, I just want to go back to, uh, to his experience as a diplomat. As I was saying, he served in the Russian Foreign Ministry for 43 years, but just to uh, really talk about all the bright sides of Vitaly Turkin, uh, we remember that uh, he served as the person responsible for dealing with the media and the Russian uh, foreign ministry during a very crucial time. That was the very beginning of the 90s, just before uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union. When uh, the Soviet Union uh, collapsed, he went on to serve as uh, Russia's ambassador in Brussels, which is, on the one hand, uh, the capital of a very important European country. But we know that Brussels is uh, where many organizations that have to do with the European Union are situated. So uh, that's where he had to deal with them, but also the headquarters of the NATO alliance. And we understand that uh, with, uh, let's say, the demolition of the Soviet Union, then uh, really he had to build a new relationship with the new Russia and the NATO bloc. And the NATO bloc is something that uh, was never going to be the same after the end of the Cold War. And uh, Vitaly Jurkin did many, course, many things. His experience spans all that time. His first roles in the Foreign Affairs Ministry in those Very Soviet days, roles. all the way through to being an ambassador as the Russian Federation came into being and um, the changes politically on the world scale and just even in Moscow. And as our ambassador guests have been saying over the past couple of hours, it's not just a question of being the focus of your country on the world stage, it's bringing the two together. A tough role, isn't it? And this was the era when uh, really Russia's position around the world it's developed. It's and uh, what Vitaly Turkin had to do was understand all this and adapt uh, his uh, understanding of it because he was, he, he was the mouthpiece. He was the person uh, who was talking at the UN. Uh, if we go to uh, 2006 when he became uh, Russia's envoy uh, to the United Nations, and uh, if you look at the highlights of his career there, uh, it was the multiple, I'd say almost nonstop, uh, get-togethers of the UN Security Council during the Georgian South Ossetian conflict in the year uh, 2008. And I remember that was a hell of a diplomatic battle there. But um, uh, then Some again... Some of those discussions went on for hours and hours and hours, didn't they? And it must uh, have been exhausting. When we say uh, an urgent meeting of the UN Security Council, urgent means urgent. Yeah. So whatever you're doing, you just have to get up and go there and put your words together and you're representing an entire nation as a member of the UN Security Council. And um, he succeeded, many are saying. 
uh, because there were some very important international agreements and deals in which uh, the role of Vitaly Chorkin uh, cannot be underestimated. And uh, uh, we've heard from many of our guests um, his crucial role uh, when it comes to the Iranian uh, nuclear peace deal. That really speaks volumes of his efforts and his experience as... Yeah, because, of course, convening the UN Security Council for those emergency meetings is not just because it's reacting to a major world event. It's not because one or more countries on that Security Council has got beef with another one. So uh, many times over the 11 years or so that Vitaly Cherkin was in that role, I mean, he was really up against it with some of the other members in there. Sometimes it just felt that uh, it was him against the entire room uh, because we understand that among uh, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, uh, yes, China is considered uh, an ally of Russia, uh, but perhaps they haven't been uh, as outspoken as Vitaly Turkin, and this really uh, makes a but difference. But often China, like Russia in that role, has often been a, a case of stopping the others from acting too rashly when um, something's occurred around the world. And things just stop, take stock, and Russia and China have been very similar in that approach when it comes to the convening of the UN Security Council at a, a last minute, the drop of a hat. But replying with uh, sharp comments and... Uh, we have heard many times that Vitaly, Vitaly Turkin did have a sharp tongue. Uh, that was his thing. Mm. That was his thing. But when you think of the, 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 the span of how he worked, and, and as you mentioned, Ilya, going from you know, the old Soviet Union to modern-day Russia and actually being the person who bridges the gap, the cultural gap, um, in these situations, particularly at the UN, what a job that must have been because... You know, we, we can't deny the rhetoric and the media banter that there is between Russia and the rest of the world. And he was the man, wasn't he, who, who bridged that gap? Yeah, because one of the things that everyone's been pointing out is that it's not just about trying to sort out the arguments going on at the UN Towers in, in New York. It's about working the room on, on a much more personal level with all those other diplomats. That's true. And he was a frequent guest on uh, so many TV stations and... Uh, uh, he had, of course, many newspapers, interviews, newspaper interviews as well. And uh, uh, this is a job uh, that really requires uh, so much experience yeah, you wonder and uh, which so is, much which takes the more patience trying to deal with all those diplomats or hectoring or reporters oh, yes. <laughs> left, right oh, yes. and centre. Um, just to uh, remind people, if you've just joined us, you're watching RT International. It's just turned 9.35 Monday evening. It's Colin Brainer, Dira Tudor and Ilya Petrenka in the studio in Moscow. We're bringing you continuing coverage and reaction to the news that Vitaly Cherkin, Russia's longtime ambassador to the United Nations, has passed away suddenly one day before his 65th birthday. Now, uh, what we can do is cross over to our correspondent, Alexei Yaroshevsky, who has been keeping across this story as well. He was one of the last journalists to actually talk to Vitaly Cherkin. He gave a, an interview to him. Alexei, first of all, let's, let's have a recap about your impressions during that interview. Well, uh, it's officially been confirmed to us by the Russian UN mission in New York City that uh, the interview that I had with <coughs> Vitaly Churkin, the Ambassador Churkin, two weeks ago was in fact his last uh, media appearance, last interview, um, during which, I mean, it's, it's still really hard for me to even say, to put these words in the same sentence, that it was his last interview, because during that interview, he seemed absolutely in fine health. He was very energetic. He, we, we covered you know, a whole range, a whole spectrum of issues in the foreign policy from uh, the latest violence in Ukraine, the relations, the potential relations with the Trump administration, Syria, Yemen. And uh, one of the highlights to me personally in that interview was when um, I asked him what one of the biggest foreign policy uh, challenges of these days are and he said without any without taking even a second to think about it he said the biggest challenge of the um, foreign policy these days is to reconcile the Shia and Sunni Muslims and he said he would this would only be possible uh, if the United States and Russia work together on this so that would probably give you an idea of uh, what what really ran through Ambassador Churkin's head, uh, the man who thought about uh, not just you know particular Russian interests or defending Russia's position within the UN Security Council, he thought about uh, the global challenges, and uh, he never made that secret. And you've spoken in, in length about how he was always sharp with words. Uh, so was the case with my interview. We 
had agreed with his um, uh, associates, with his um, aides before that interview, that there would only be like five or six questions on uh, five or six major subjects. Um, I, I never counted, but I think uh, I ended up having about 20 questions to Ambassador Shurkin in that interview. And again, he never took a second to think about the responses. They were always sharp, concise, down to the point. Um, whether it related to very serious foreign policy issues like Syria, Yemen, or, or Ukraine, or more lighthearted uh, questions that I asked to him. And one of those questions was, in fact, uh, when I asked him whether it was stressful for a diplomat to work in the very hostile foreign policy environment that we're having these days. And here, here is his response. I do not regret that I chose a career in diplomacy. It would be a lie to say that it is an easy one. Indeed, there are some hard moments in the life of a diplomat of a country. We are in one of those moments right now. I would prefer that things had turned out differently and we didn't have to experience some of the events which took place in recent years. However, we are where we are and we need to react accordingly and continue to live. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed that interview. It covered, again, a whole range of issues. A lot of things that Ambassador Churkin told me in that interview, I've, I've never actually even heard from uh, a Russian diplomatic official. Uh, for instance, again, as I've mentioned, the, the issue of reconciling the Sunni and Shia Muslims in the Middle East. Uh, our viewers, I believe, can go to our website uh, to find that interview, or even easier, go to Twitter. I just tweeted out that interview with Churkin that I had two weeks ago and listened to the whole thing. It's about half an hour uh, long and uh, that's uh, probably twice longer than we had originally expected. And even more so, just to give you a more personal uh, you know, insight into how this interview was conducted, I asked um, Vitaly Churkin's uh, aide after that interview whether the ambassador was um, you know, okay about me having grilled him for half an hour, which was not uh, going according to the script. Uh, and he said he was absolutely fine with that. Moreover, he enjoyed the interview and they, they are looking forward to having more interviews with me on that matter in the future. Uh, I'm, I'm shell-shocked at the news that came this morning and uh, literally listless uh, as to what happened. Alexei, um, you know, if we look at the interview that you did uh, and, and the fact that uh, he was able to give you all that time, because, you know, many of us here have obviously interviewed lots of high-profile people. You have a set time, you stick to the time, but actually in your case, it showed a bit of an insight into his character, didn't it? That he gave you the time and so much time. How did you feel about that? And did you also feel intimidated knowing that you were talking to someone with such a vast amount of experience and in the field that he was in? You know, I'll, I'll give you, a, uh, in response to your question, I'll give you an, another um, uh, sort of occurrence that I've had with Vitaly Churkin just recently. When I went to New York to cover um, the World Chess Championship where a Russian, Sergei Karyakin, was playing against the, uh, Magnus Svensson from, from, from Norway, uh, Vitaly Churkin was indeed there for the final game. Um, and at some point he just walked over to me at random and said, Hi, Alexei, I haven't seen you for a very long time. I, I, I told him, uh, Vitaly Ivanovich, I, I've moved from New York City to Washington and, and working for RT in Washington these days. And he said, well, it's, it's, it's a pity because I enjoyed working with you. I mean, to, to me, these words meant, uh, you know, a whole world. And I, and I was really uh, glad and happy that I've heard this from him. But when I arrived for this interview two weeks ago, I asked him specifically because, um, as you mentioned, we, we have this experience of um, uh, interviewing high-profile people, politicians, uh, ministers, you know, presidents. And I asked him specifically whether he had any you know, time restraints, whether he only had maybe 15, 20 minutes for us. And he said, no, let's just, let's just uh, start rolling and we'll see how it goes. And uh, I don't have any, you know, uh, any time constraints in that respect. So you can ask me whatever you want. And I did ask him whatever I wanted. Uh, as I've said, we only had five or six questions uh, discussed uh, ahead of the interview, but I asked him more than, more than probably two dozen questions something about that. And the interview went very well. His character, I mean, it's, I can talk about this for hours, uh, how open he was uh, on and off camera. And uh, maybe there, we, we saw a little bit of a different Vitaly Churkin, you know, within the chambers of the UN Security Council, having those feisty exchanges with his colleagues, uh, particularly Samantha Power, the former U US ambassador to the UN, or, or Susan Rice, or many, many others. Alexia, uh, I just and, want to ask you. Uh, Vitaly Churkin off camera. 
Alexia, I just want sure. to ask you about that. I mean, you know, the, the person that we see in, in the middle of a UN Security Council meeting and what you saw behind the scenes, I think that's really important to, to now talk about those two people rolled into one. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, just as I was, I was saying, uh, in the UN Security Council, you would get the impression that Vitaly Churkin is a ruthless fighter uh, standing for his position, standing for Russia's position against uh, somewhat, sometimes uh, very harsh accusations uh, in uh, the off-camera environment. Uh, and I've been to several events where uh, where he was present. Uh, he was a very easygoing man, always shared a good joke, always laughed. Um, uh, if, if our viewers can go to my uh, Twitter account right now, Yaro underscore RT, they would see a picture that I tweeted from that interview we had two weeks ago, and you can see Vitaly Churkin, the Ambassador Churkin, smiling there, um, which, which shows what, what kind of man he was. He was very easygoing uh, and very lighthearted on many issues, but um, when uh, within the UN Security Council where uh, Russia's interests uh, had to be defended, uh, he, was, uh, he was, you know, uh, throwing punches and he was uh, a strong fighter there. But to give you the idea, I mean, probably nothing would describe it better how respected he was among his colleagues. His fierce rival within the UN Security Council, Samantha Power, just tweeted uh, that she was devastated with the passing of uh, Vitaly Churkin and she called him uh, a great man who's always fought for bridging the divide, the differences between U.S. and Russia. And that, that's, you know, as accurate as it can possibly get. Uh, I, as I've communicated a lot with Vitaly Shurkin, with Ambassador Shurkin, I've got this impression as well that he really wanted Washington and Moscow come together. And when I tried to grill him in that interview two weeks ago about the perspectives of that, about the new administration, about particularly Nikki Haley, the new U.S. ambassador in the United Nations, who at his first, at her first appearance uh, within the U.N., was not really favorable and was not really, uh, you know, uh, lavishing any praise on Russia. She was actually very critical. Uh, he said he never expected any miracles, and this was, uh, you know, the change in our relation, the potential change in our relations between Washington and Moscow is not something that can happen overnight, but he would be ready to uh, lead the effort in order to make those ties better. And he mentioned a lot of issues where Russia and the United States could cooperate. So he, he was a man of great vision. He was a man uh, uh, of seeing things right. And as we've mentioned uh, tons already, he, he always knew what he was talking about right there on the spot. You've um, spent a lot of time stateside, Alexei, especially in Washington. Let's be honest, it's a capital city that's not been Moscow's best friend over the past few years. And in the 11 years that Vitaly Cherkin was at the UN, how difficult was it for him, do you think, to steer that diplomatic train in a country that's really not been that friendly to Moscow at all? Well, I've come here uh, almost exactly three years ago, and uh, this is the, probably the most turbulent time in the ties between U.S. and uh, Russia. And my first year in New York, I closely followed um, the U.N. Security Council briefings. Uh, you know, even my, some of my colleagues even laughed at me a little bit because they don't usually watch the, the U.N. Security Council meetings in full. I was watching them in full because I was interested to see how that goes. And, you know, that amazed me to, to great lengths that... Uh, in the times when uh, so many accusations were thrown against Russia, Churkin still managed to uh, stand up to that and still managed to find a response, uh, even to things which, you know, would really hard to, to explain to, to an ordinary person. Uh, of course, he drew a lot of uh, praise for that. He drew a lot of criticism for that. But nonetheless, this job, um, I mean, it's, it's super stressful. I asked him about this in an interview. You heard his response. Uh, he also, as something that our viewers probably don't know, uh, began his career as an actor. He played in, uh, he acted in, in, in a couple of um, Soviet comedies. Uh, but when I asked him whether he had any regrets about becoming a, a top-level diplomat rather than becoming an actor, he told me that he would rather be a good diplomat than a bad actor, and he laughed after that. So. Um, there, there, there you go. I mean, as, as much as stressful this environment is, Churkin was always ready for that challenge. And indeed, this environment, particularly the UN Security Council, has been very stressful over the last several years, as, especially amid the calls that the UN Security Council is not, you know, resolving any issues, is not changing the world for the better. Vitaly Churkin was still um, very optimistic about the fact that uh, the UN Security Council can still do its job and still make uh, conflicts go away and can still improve things in the world. And how do you think uh, 
Vitaly Cherkin's passing is going to be uh, reacted to where you are. There are a lot of hard-nosed politicians, a lot of hard-nosed diplomats in that city where you are. What will they be thinking? Has there been much reaction so far? Well, uh, it's very easy to imagine that, you know, U.S.-Russia ties are now under um, a, a microscope, uh, you know, considering all the accusations towards Russia. Russia never leaves the headlines in the mainstream media. I mean, I cannot tell you whether they're running the uh, story of Turkin's passing at this moment since I'm, I'm talking to you guys. But uh, obviously it is, it's going to be uh, talked a lot, especially in the context of who's going to take his place. Uh, which is, uh, you know, a very, very hard place to take. Uh, I mean, the, the gap left by Cherkin uh, doesn't have a, a size at the moment, uh, considering the job he's been doing for so many years, considering how experienced he has been. So uh, I, I suppose it's going to be talked a lot about now. Um, but the interesting question is who's going to take his place. Again, it's a big intrigue. It is. Uh, for now, Alexei Arashevsky in Washington. Thanks for that. We'll let you get on and uh, see what other reaction you can get for us for now, though. Thank you very much. Um, some other uh, details to bring you. Um, it's uh, understood that Vitaly Cherkin became ill at his office at uh, Russia's UN mission and was taken to hospital where he later died it was earlier this Monday in New York. Now, the international diplomatic community is reacting to the sudden passing of Russia's UN ambassador, Vitaly Cherkin. Several diplomats are writing messages online remembering Mr. Cherkin's legacy. The former president of the UN General Assembly, Volker Jeremik, says it was an enormous privilege to work with Vitaly Cherkin. Members of many diplomatic missions, including Japan, Indonesia and Costa Rica, have also expressed their deep condolences. Susan Rice, the former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, commented on Twitter as well. She said Vitaly Cherkin was huge at the U.N. and a formidable adversary who had always been a friend. In fact, the, uh, the sense of shock is it, quite palpable and quite telling, really, from uh, Vitaly Cherkin's biggest sparring partner. The um, grief and condolences coming from Samantha Power, describing him, well, saying devastated at Vitaly Cherkin's passing, mm. a diplomatic maestro is how she described him on Twitter, and a deeply caring man who did all he could to bridge U.S.-Russia differences. Vitaly Cherkin's passing has been marked in the United Nations by a minute silence. Distinguished colleagues, excellencies, it is with deep sadness that I have to inform you that the Russian delegation have just informed us of the untimely passing away of Ambassador Vitaly Cherkin this morning. I would like to offer, on behalf of all of us, our deepest condolences to the country, to the government of Russia, to the Russian mission here at the UN, and most of all, to the wife and two children of Ambassador Vitaly Cherkin. He was a dear colleague of all of ours, a deeply committed diplomat to his country, and one of the finest people we have known. And I'd like to mark this moment here today with a moment of silence in memory of his service. Please stand. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family and the Russian mission and the country at this time. We will now resume the session. A minute silence held a short time ago at the United Nations headquarters to mark the passing, the sudden passing of Russia's UN envoy Vitaly Cherkin. Now, Ilya, that uh, scene that we just saw there um, is very emotional indeed, I think. And uh, when you think of what goes on usually in that conference center, particularly with the dynamic person that Cherkin was, um, and as Colin mentioned before, having comments like of devastation by the likes of Samantha Power. Because that chamber is all about jousting. It's all about fighting your corner, it isn't is. it? But, but what scene, a level of this 
tragic news is. I don't is. remember when was the last time I saw uh, the UN Security Council chamber being so united, I guess. Yeah. Yes. A, a very good point. Very good and, point. you know, the, the tragedy that has happened today, uh, if nothing else has come out of this, to see that unity within those chambers is, is quite incredible for the world to watch in terms of diplomacy and what it should be, isn't it? But then again, uh, you do realize that uh, when it comes to uh, the diplomatic battles that are going on in that room, I guess it is fair to say uh, that uh, Vitaly Turkin was uh, one of the brightest personalities at the UN in uh, uh, the 21st century when he took up that position in 2006. Uh, but before that even, uh, there was three decades of service at uh, the Russian Foreign Ministry during which of course, um, he has met many, many diplomats from around the world and gained a reputation of a man uh, with a strategic sense, a man with uh, a sense of humor at the same time, and uh, a man uh, with a personality that, on a personal level, uh, gained him a lot of friends. Yeah, but what, a, but what a track record as well. More than 40 years of work throughout the foreign ministry in diplomatic circles, and then that's 11, it made him a veteran of the United Nations. Veteran of the United Nations and uh, more so a veteran of uh, the Russian Foreign Ministry. If we just go through uh, the positions that he occupied, uh, he was uh, the person who's responsible for dealing with the media during some of the crucial times in Russia's history. That was the beginning of the 90s uh, when the Soviet Union was collapsing. Almost straight after that, he took up the position of... Russia's ambassador in Belgium. Uh, Belgium is a country where the EU's based, NATO's based, and uh, this was really a time when uh, many important things, crucial things in the history of Russia were happening here in Moscow. And uh, that was a shift in, in, in many ways, and he was uh, someone who had to adapt to this shift to, to really keep representing uh, Russia's new government, Russia's new government in Europe, and this was when uh, uh, a new uh, type of relationship was being built between Russia and NATO. And uh, uh, that's well, with uh, Russia and countries around the world as well. After the when the Soviet Union ended, and Russia was then finding its feet again on the world stage. Not that it had to go back to the beginning in any way, but everybody had to forge a new relationship with this emerging country, this re-emerging nation. And uh, when you're saying that, you got to realize that a lot of that was meaning uh, finding a relationship, a new relationship with Vitaly Turkin himself. Uh, but then if we go to the year 2006, uh, a major career move, uh, the most important uh, position uh, for uh, Russia in uh, the UN Security Council, uh, that is where Russia is a permanent member along with uh, the US, the UK, France, and China, and this explains why this man very, very often had to uh, uh, really face an entire room uh, when uh, he was presenting his cause, when he pre was presenting the cause of uh, the Russian government. And speaking of uh, uh, diplomacy, he had many, many adversaries there. His first real test in terms of that was uh, the Georgian South Ossetian conflict in the year 2008. Uh, I remember watching live debates at the UN Security Council, and uh, this is something I told you before. This made such a big impression on me. Uh, I was already interested in what was going on uh, uh, at, at the international stage yeah. in uh, world diplomacy in international relations, but that's really when I uh, wanted to become a journalist in uh, uh, something that had to do with international relations. Okay, Ilya, for now, thank you very much. Now, the chair of the Federation Council of Russia's Foreign Affairs Committee, Konstantin Kosachev, has shared with us his personal memories of his working relationship with Mr. Turgin. It's a huge loss for Russian diplomacy. The post of the Russian representative to the UN is one of the highest diplomatic posts. It's a huge role that demands great professionalism. The best Russian diplomats have always occupied this post. And the whole country is proud of everything he has done for Russia. Churkin dies while in his post on a business trip. He gave everything to his work, to his duty, to his country, to his beliefs. He worked in an environment of constant opposition coming from many sides. 
in an environment where a country, sometimes with fair reason, but mostly not, was the centre of discussion and negative situations. And of course, all of this he worked through. I saw him at work and was always surprised by his dedication, self-control and courage. And now we understand that it cost him. He really gave himself to his work and to his country. May his memory live forever. That's Konstantin Kosachev, the chair of the Federation Council of Russia's Foreign Affairs Committee, sharing his memories of uh, his working relationship with Vitaly Cherkin, who's passed away suddenly at the age of 64. We're going to continue bringing you reaction to that news here on RT International. Donald Trump came to the presidency claiming he would drain the swamp. A month in, the swamp and the corporate media are fighting back. Is this a war of attrition? Watching RT International from Moscow, the Russian ambassador to the United Nations, Vitaly Cherkin, has died. He passed away a day before his 65th birthday. Well known for his expert way with words, he always fiercely defended the Russian view on major international issues after he began his career as the envoy to the United Nations for Russia back in 2006. Also renowned for the difficult diplomatic work during the Russian-Georgian conflict and also the South Ossetian War. Hello, it's 10 p.m. Monday evening here in the Russian capital. My name's Colin Bray, along with Nadira Tudor and correspondent Ilya Petrenko. And this is our continuing coverage of reaction to the news that Vitaly Cherkin, Russia's ambassador to the United Nations, has passed away suddenly in the United States. We can talk to Alexei Yaroshevsky, RT's correspondent in Washington. He was one of the final journalists to be able to speak to Vitaly Cherkin. Alexei, just recap for us your impressions of that final interview with Ambassador Cherkin. You know, to say that I'm shocked uh, with the news this morning is to say nothing at all, because two weeks ago I headed to New York City for what turned out to be Vitaly Churkin's last TV interview, and this is something that has been confirmed to us by the Russian UN mission in New York City. Uh, and during that interview, there was absolutely no indication that Vitaly Churkin may be suffering uh, some health issues. He was absolutely energetic, uh, as he usually is, he was providing um, very direct, very concise and down to the point answers to all my questions and uh, to give you a more uh, you know, professional, behind-the-scenes kind of input. We had agreed to five or six questions prior to that interview, and it ended up going off the script. I asked him about 20 questions. The interview lasted for uh, more than 30 minutes, and our viewers can find it online on, on my Twitter account or on RT.com website. Uh, that was indeed his last interview. I asked him a whole uh, range of different questions relating, obviously, to foreign policy, starting from the potential relations with the new administration, uh, with the Trump administration in Washington, and his particular colleague, uh, Nikki Haley, at the UN, uh, representing the United States these days. I asked him about Ukraine, about Syria, about Yemen, 
And one of the things politically and for, in terms of foreign policy which um, got under my skin and which struck me because I've never heard a Russian official talking about this uh, out in the open is when I asked him what he saw as the biggest challenge of the foreign policy these days and he uh, replied without taking even a second to think about it as he usually does, he usually did, sorry. Um, he, uh, he answered that the biggest challenge of the foreign policy these days is to reconcile the Sh Sunni and Shia Muslims in the Middle East and this is something that can be achieved no matter how impossible it may seem to a lot of observers. So this is something that may be achieved only if uh, Russia and the United States work together. Uh, this is something that even his fierce counterparts, his fierce rivals in the UN Security Council have reflected upon, like uh, Samantha Power, the former U.S. ambassador to the UN, who was a sharp critic of Russia's actions, who had feisty exchanges with Churkin when she was in office in the UN. She tweeted out that Churkin was indeed a great man, uh, working hard to uh, bridge out the differences between U.S. and Russia, and he, she was devastated by his sudden passing. But we spoke obviously a lot about very serious foreign policy issues with Ambassador Churkin two weeks ago in New York. Um, I also asked him a, a bunch of lighthearted questions. For instance, I asked him how he saw the change, the transformation of the world of diplomacy, considering he's been there for more than three decades. Um, how stressful it, it was to work in the today environment of foreign policy and diplomacy. And here was his response. Let's listen. I do not regret that I chose a career in diplomacy. It would be a lie to say that it is an easy one. Indeed, there are some hard moments in the life of a diplomat of a country. We are in one of those moments right now. I would prefer that things had turned out differently and we didn't have to experience some of the events which took place in recent years. However, we are where we are and we need to react accordingly and continue to live. So there you go. This is Vitaly Churkin in a nutshell. Uh, very optimistic, despite all the hardships, despite even the conversations that he was forced to have within the UN Security Council. Uh, little, you know, a few people know, uh, especially among our international audience, that he actually started his career as a movie actor. He managed to star in three of Russian uh, comedies, Soviet comedies, obviously, in those times. Uh, but when I asked him whether he had any regrets about becoming a top-level diplomat rather than an actor, he replied with, with a smile that he would rather be a good diplomat than a bad actor. So this describes him uh, probably be best of all. I've had numerous conversations with Ambassador Shurkin on and off camera. I've watched him for years uh, within the UN Security Council. Uh, he, some may say he was somewhat different, you know, uh, at the battleground which the UN Secu Security Council had been for him. And uh, in, in ordinary life, in events or one-on-one or -on -one interviews, but there was one feature which defined Churkin um, without any question. It's his uh, ability and his absolutely natural ability, I should say, to respond to any uh, question uh, without taking even a second of pause, without even taking a second to think about it. Uh, very sharp with words, uh, very uh, handling every interview very well. And the interview we had in New York two weeks ago was definitely not an exception to that rule. And unfortunately, as we now know, it turned out to be Vitaly Churkin's final news interview. Uh, for now, Alexei Arashevsky in Washington, thanks very much for that. Um, in, in terms of the descriptions and the news um, as it's spreading around the world, words like combative, firebrand, forthright, but also an incredible outpouring of grief um, from Vitaly Cherkin's former colleagues. There certainly is a, a lot of reaction now that we're getting. So the international diplomatic community is reacting to the sudden passing of Russia's UN ambassador, Vitaly Churkin. Several diplomats are writing messages online, remembering Mr. Churkin's legacy. The former president of the UN General Assembly, Vuk Yeremich, says it was an enormous privilege to work with Vitaly Churkin. Members of many diplomatic missions, including Japan, Indonesia and Costa Rica, have also expressed their deep condolences. Susan Rice, the former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, commented on Twitter as well. She said Vitaly Churkin was huge at the U.N. and a formidable adversary who had always been a friend. America's former ambassador to the UN, Samantha Power, was one of Vitaly Churkin's main opponents at the UN Security Council sessions, and she says she's devastated by the news of his death. 
She's written on Twitter that Jokin was a, quote, diplomatic maestro and a deeply caring man who did all he could to bridge U.S.-Russian differences. Vitaly Churkin's passing has been marked in the UN by a minute silence. Distinguished colleagues, excellencies, it is with deep sadness that I have to inform you that the Russian delegation have just informed us of the untimely passing away of Ambassador Vitaly Churkin this morning. I would like to offer, on behalf of all of us, our deepest condolences to the country to the government of Russia, to the Russian mission here at the UN, and most of all, to the wife and two children of Ambassador Vitaly Cherkin. He was a dear colleague of all of ours, a deeply committed diplomat to his country, and one of the finest people we have known. And I'd like to mark this moment here today with a moment of silence in memory of his service. Please stand. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family and the Russian mission and the country at this time. We will now resume the session. A moving tribute at the UN headquarters reacting to the loss of Ambassador Vitaly Cherkin, who passed away earlier today. Um, other reaction that's been coming in from uh, the Kremlin. President Vladimir Putin deeply upset by the news, had greatly valued Mr. Cherkin's professionalism and diplomatic talent. Um, Mr. Cherkin's deputy, Peter Ilyotchev, the loss sustained by Russia is grave and irreplaceable. Ambassador Cherkin remained at his post until the last minute. He devoted his whole life to defending the interests of Russia and was to be found on the very front lines and in the most stressful posts. Um, other diplomatic reaction uh, that we've heard from the UK's representative to the United Nations, who says he's devastated by the death of Russia's diplomatic giant. There's certainly a lot of devastation there and we can get more reaction from Jeremy Kinsman now, a former Canadian ambassador to the EU who knew Vit Vitaly Churkin personally. Uh, welcome to the programme, Jeremy. Uh, terrible circumstances, but Churkin was the Russian ambassador to Canada earlier in his career. What was your impression of him? Well, I knew Vitaly well. Uh, first, when I was actually ambassador to the Russian Federation. Uh, Vitaly was a golden boy, you know. He uh, Golden, though, his hair turned gray very, very prematurely. He was only in his 30s, but had a great dignity. I was interested to, uh, to hear of his uh, being an actor. Uh, he carried some of those talents into diplomacy. Uh, he was remarkably effective communicator. I liked uh, Vitaly enormously and uh, my wife and I uh, very much admired his wife. They were modern. They were part of that young cohort of absolutely outstanding Russian diplomats that jumped to the fore in the 90s when the upper echelons uh, moved on, and uh, and particularly as uh, as the action transferred to the Russian Federation. He was the generation of Kozirev, of, of Sergei Lavrov, uh, and he was absolutely the best and the brightest, a man who had, as I recall, uh, a doctorate when he went in the 90s as, as the golden boy to, uh, to deal with the issues, the intractable issues of the Balkans. He eventually knew more about the Balkans than any of the Balkan experts. And so it went with Vitaly. He always attached himself to, to the facts, to the knowledge of things. You know, he was a very fine ambassador to Canada. And after that, 
he took on the role as a Mr. Arctic Council. Uh, Mr. Arctic Council, who made something of the council. Uh, he, was, he was terrific. He was handsome. Uh, he was self-confident. Those things didn't always win you friends uh, from all of your colleagues, who perhaps didn't have his talents and skills. But Vitali was also a nice guy. And so ultimately people became his friend. He had tough jobs. He was consummately professional. He channeled his country, the best of his country, I think, and he was remarkably successful. Well, Jeremy, I high praise it. indeed coming from you. And, and you mentioned the fact that he was a golden boy. Uh, he was a, a young, a part of the young cohort during that time. And obviously that was a transitional time, wasn't it, in the 1990s? How important do you think those traits, his forward thinking attitude was in, in terms of diplomacy with the rest of the world? I think he was enormously effective. I mean, he... Uh, and his, his generation uh, represented a new face of Russia, a younger face, an internationalist face. Uh, needless to say, Vitali spoke English uh, absolutely fluently. His wife spoke French absolutely fluently. Uh, they were an absolutely convincing uh, face to the world, and that's why in the 90s we all pitched in, uh, perhaps not always as effectively as we might have, but to lend our support to Russia at that time. And at, at a time when uh, EU politics is in such a state of flux and US politics is in a state of flux, uh, you mentioned about Vitaly Cherkin's uh, contribution to trying to steady that ship over the years. What do you think his passing will affect um, dealings with Russia and the EU and North America? Well, I don't know, Colin. I, uh, his, his efforts, you know, he, he was liked and admired and respected by, by his peers. Um, no matter what the difference is, I just read the tweets that you posted here by Samantha Power and Susan Rice and, uh, and the British Ambassador Rycroft. I mean, uh, sure, there were pretty vibrant uh, differences uh, in this current toxic, perhaps unnecessarily toxic atmosphere internationally. But, uh, but Vitali was, was always, always Vitali. He was able to connect privately to the people involved, and he always kept that channel open. Mm. And I, I dearly hope. Uh, uh, sorry, Jeremy, yes? I was going to ask, how much is it down then just to the professional diplomacy or the charisma in making a success well, of roles like that? I think it's both. That's why I was tickled by the notion he said that uh, he, he'd rather be a good diplomat than a bad actor. Uh, whatever, I don't know if he was a good actor or a bad actor, but I don't think his diplomacy was an act. What it was was authentic. I think, I think the man uh, was the best thing a diplomat can be, which is believable. You don't agree necessarily with all the positions, but you believe in his professionalism, and above all, you believe he's listening to you. That's a difficult uh, trait to have, isn't it, for, for, for the masses to actually believe what you're saying. And, uh, and the fact that he wasn't afraid to oppose the, the majority often uh, was quite a trait, wasn't it? Well, it's tough. It's not so much that he wasn't afraid. It was his job, if he was in the minority, to represent uh, his country. And I think he articulated his positions as fairly as, uh, as he could. You know, this is a time when there's an awful lot of phony stuff out there about, about elites. Well, I, I don't know how we're going to do without expertise in the world. But I can tell you that, uh, that uh, of, of people I know, uh, Vitali was a consummate uh, member, a charter member of genuine elites. He was really top of the line. And, uh, and, and Russia and his many friends uh, in the foreign ministry and elsewhere, uh, they know that they have lost a great champion. Yeah, it, it's certainly a loss of some formidable experience at the United Nations. I, I mentioned earlier on Russia's deputy permanent representative to the United Nations saying that Mr. Cherkin kept working to the very end. He had to c overcome so many points of contention with the West during those 11 years or so at the United Nations. It might be difficult to pick one, but what do you think he'll be remembered for most in that time? 
Uh, from his time in the United Nations? Yes. I, I, it's hard for me to say, uh, Colin. I, I think that uh, there have been uh, so many issues. Uh, I think that he'll, I think what is most important is that he's going to be remembered by his colleagues. And again, I, I, I notice what Samantha Power and Susan Rice wrote. He's going to be remembered uh, f for his contribution to, to their understanding of where Russia was coming from. And I believe that despite differences, because of him, they were best able to channel the, the sorts of things that, uh, that, that he was trying to represent uh, and, and, and to make bef best efforts to, to come to some kind of, of understanding. I think that's what Vitali always represented. I mean, he represented Russian interests, of course, but uh, Russian interests, he always communicated, Russian interests resided in getting an understanding with others. Anyway, that's how I see him, roughly. And uh, he was a wonderful modern Russian, and he's gone far too soon. Certainly, for a man who had to make a job of having to be so combative at times, you, you've echoed some touching tributes about the legacy that Vitaly Cherkin leaves behind. I, I really appreciate you appearing on RT. Jeremy Kinsman, former ambassador. It's my honour. Thank you. Former Canadian ambassador to the EU. Thanks very much for that, Jeremy. And the devotion is undoubtable. You know, we just got news in that uh, the Russian ambassador to UN, obviously Vitaly Cherkin, he died at the workplace, um, which says an awful lot again about his character. Now, Russia's deputy foreign minister and one of Vitaly Cherkin's close personal friend, Sergei Ryabkov, gave us this statement. I'm still absolutely devastated and shocked. I knew him very closely. We were friends, colleagues. He was an outstanding professional, a wonderful person, a man with a strong will. He had a beautiful family. His colleagues admired him and his enemies envied him. This is a tremendous loss not only for diplomacy, but for the country as a whole. He's irreplaceable. I just have no words to describe all the pain, the grief, all the compassion I have for his wife and his family. It's like a knife in the heart. Through himself he channeled all world politics, world diplomacy, the global fight, the shaking foundations of the world order that we strongly opposed. We fought together for a better, brighter world, and he sacrificed himself to this fight. His selfless service for his homeland eventually brought his passing. Certainly a lot of touching tributes in the past couple of hours as the world learns uh, the news of the sad passing, the sudden passing of Russia's UN envoy Vitaly Cherkin. His reaction from the Director General of the Russian Institute of Foreign Policy Studies and Initiatives. The passing of Vitaly Cherkin is an enormous loss for Russian diplomacy. In UN headquarters in New York, he was a leading figure on the information and political front. Over the last three years, with the situation in Ukraine and Syria, in a strained international environment, Vitaly Ivanovich gave everything to his work. His death, while still in his post, once again showed us how hard and meaningful his work and our diplomats' work is for defending the interests of our country. I knew him personally. He was a great person and brilliant professional. It's a huge loss for all of us. Vitaly Cherkin graduated from the Moscow State Institute um, University. And here's just a brief recap of Mr. Cherkin's career. He graduated from the Moscow State Institute of International Affairs. Um, Moscow State Institute of International Relations in 1974, shortly before beginning his decades-long career at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He first came to prominence as Foreign Ministry spokesman for the Soviet Union from 1990 until its collapse the following year. He went on to serve as Deputy Russian Foreign Minister and Ambassador to Belgium and then to Canada. He became Russia's permanent representative to the United Nations back in 2006 and served in this position for 11 years. He's famous for his diplomatic work during the Russian-Georgian conflict, the South Ossetian War, and more recently on Syria. Former Greek ambassador Leonardis Chrysanthopoulos says Cherkin's death is a massive loss for Russian diplomacy.
I'm very shocked. I mean, I could not believe it that uh, such a good man had to leave us uh, so suddenly. We were together ambassadors in uh, in uh, Canada. In, uh, from well, I was there from 2000 to 2004, and uh, we had a very close cooperation. He was a good friend. And uh, he was always answering uh, very clearly, and he was a good, uh, and he supported Russian foreign policy with such patriotism that I have never seen before. I met him afterwards at the United Nations when I was going there as Secretary General of the Black Sea Economic Cooperation Organization. We were always, uh, and we were discussing about the uh, the problems of the time at the United Nations, and he was telling me how stressful it was, how difficult the work was, but he was he was a good fighter. It's uh, something sad that has happened, and the, the Russian diplomacy has lost a great member. This is RT International, where we're bringing a continuing reaction to the news that Vitaly Cherkin, Russia's UN envoy, has passed away suddenly at the age of 64 and a lot of touching tributes in the short time that we've been able to come to terms with that news. Yes, it's only been a couple of hours and there's been a huge reaction already. Uh, uh, President Putin, Russia's President Vladimir Putin, says he was deeply upset by the news and had greatly valued Chukin's professionalism and diplomatic talent. That's high praise indeed. Obviously, we heard about Samantha Power who said that she was devastated by the news. Very strong language we're hearing a Very about emotional this. response as well from very someone who's been trading so many barbs with Vitaly Cherkin yes. over the years. Uh, Nadira, thanks very much for that. Also, uh, Ilya Petrenko. We're going to continue to bring you coverage and reaction. This is RT International.